And one thing that we're excited about is fleshing out the world of Runeterra and having cool followers. So followers is our term for uh, units in the game that aren't champions. And a really good one that comes to mind is Tiana Crown Guard, which is Lux's aunt. One really cool part about working on this game is a lot of the Runeterra map, you know, it exists, but fleshing out like what other characters fill in the universe is something that we are kind of taking on. Did you say Lux's aunt? Yeah, Tiana Crown Guard. And what's cool about that is that um, she's a character that we developed to kind of like, you know, what does Demacia look like? What is the Crown Guard family like up to? You know, they're like anti-magic, like who's doing what? How does Lux interact with that? And sorry, the point though is that she's now in the Tiana Crown Guard. You can see her in the Lux co comic. So if players have read uh, the Marvel uh, Riot Lux comic, if they see Tiana Crown Guard, that's actually a character that was developed for Legends of Runeterra that is now being kind of cross-used as a character in League of Legends. So yeah, that's kind of stuff that we're definitely looking to do in the future. So Lux's arm could become playable in the Summoner's Rift one day. Um, I can't really answer that, but it's something that could be cool. Um, I think that a good example from our game that is like Cythria, who in our game she has multiple cards. She has Cythria and you see her of Cloudfield. She kind of, you see a car where she's just kind of new to Demacia. She's kind of like uh, the naive, like what am I doing there? And then you see her progression becoming a warrior. There's, there's, then she becomes Cythria the Bold. And the idea is, uh, you know, if players really think that there are characters in our game that resonate with them, then we can eventually develop them in the, in the champions. But right now we're starting with champions that already exist, yeah, of course, yeah. because we really know that that's something that players love. Yeah. Can I just start? I, I could be wrong with this, but there was a piece of art I saw, and I think it was from Legends of Rune Terror. I think I can't think of the type of okay. the name of the people. Um, Singe, those kind of people, Noxians or something like that. Right. I could so, be wrong with that. So and there was someone that people are going, "Oh, this person's amazing. Can we get her as a character?" Oh, okay. So I don't you know. know if you're talking about, but we have this thing called the Crimson Cult. And it's kind of like they're all crimson units, and they're sort of like Vladimir's cult of like followers, yeah, who they, they all deal with blood magic. That's it. Yeah, I don't know if I that's think. it. And we have a really like diverse cast, and people really saw that and really love those characters. And it's kind of cool because um, their art is kind of all different. But on the one card, I believe the Crimson Awakener is a shot of him and Noxious, and they're sort of sitting on a on a street corner, and you have the peddler who's kind of like this sort of like deal like dealing with he has a blood capsule. Uh, yeah, that, the I Crimson Curator, so. and he's, you know, and he's basically like a character who's sort of like dealing with this blood magic, kind of like the weird, like, oh, is he like dealing like drugs with the blood, or like what is he up to? Uh, I'm not the best person to talk about the narrative yeah, side, yeah, no but that, the, the Crimson units, I believe, and they kind of like serve the cult of Vladimir as this like vampire lord in our yeah. game, yeah. So, you know, it's interesting that the lore is being added to outside of League of Legends, the game, it's, in other games now, it's coming through. It's almost like overwhelming, isn't it? The possibilities now for yeah. the League of Legends franchise what, in the future. It's really interesting for us, especially because when you think about um, in Legends of Runeterra, uh, champions aren't one-to-one -one copies of like what we see in League of Legends, because in League of Legends there are reworks, there are changes, and we take kind of what players love about the character, and then we kind of design around that. So we'll see in the future, like as we become, as Riot becomes, and League of Legends as like a IP just becomes a more big thing. You know, you might see some characters just portrayed in like slightly different ways. But when we do that, we really do that based on what players think about characters. So when we design characters on Legends of Runeterra, we actually have a really cool. Uh, we have a lot of data from League of Legends. We have a play. We have a feedback tool that allows us to kind of ask players, "Hey, what do you got? What like say one word to describe your character?" And we sort of like word cloud out what people like about characters. And then we try to recreate that. And one of the really cool parts about that is uh, in Legends of Runeterra, we found that some champion, some people identify with champions mechanically, and some people identify with champions thematically. So what I mean by that is if you take Yasuo, for example, players that love Yasuo tend to just really like his gameplay. They, they like knocking stuff up, cutting stuff down, you know, dashing through units. Being damn annoying. Yeah, potentially being damn annoying and then getting fed. And then when you try to gank him with three people, he kills you all. Uh, so we really tried to actually, in, Le in Legends of Interra, excuse me, to sort of design Yasuo around those mechanics where, you know, when you stun and recall stuff, he actually cuts them up, which is, we find players really love that. But for a character like Vladimir, we found that people, while some people are attached to the gameplay mechanics, they're really about the idea that he's this kind of, like, vampire blood mage, right, who, like, sucks the blood out of people. So sometimes, you know, we find that players are more interested in the thematics as opposed to mechanics. 
And since we're recreating these champions, you know, we have to take those decisions into account. So in our game, Vladimir was actually more of like a blood mage than a specific... And he kind of, like we talked about his Call of Vampires earlier, he kind of sucks blood out of his allies to deal damage to his enemies. Which is interesting because that's not really how he works in League of Legends. But we're hoping that that's really true to the character and the players really tie, tie into that.